I loved Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, but even so, I didn't even consider buying Sparks of Hope for one second, because after all, it was made by Ubisoft. Why does that matter? Well, obviously, if you wait like six months, the game's gonna be marked down to like $20, you dingo. But wait, Cameron, if you don't buy a game at launch, then aren't you running the risk of developers going out of business? Well, yeah, that is kind of an issue, so what are we supposed to do? W well, uh, why don't you watch my critically acclaimed intro while I frantically stall for time to come up with an answer? Alright, so I know that if nobody buys games for full price right after they come out, then the developers will suffer financially, which in turn jeopardizes the futures of popular franchises, but given how poorly Ubisoft's doing right now, I don't think I'm the only one who's not wanting to buy games on day one anymore. I mean, Sparks of Hope's only been out for a few months at the time of this recording, and it's already 25% off, which is basically Ubisoft's way of giving the middle finger to everybody who bought the game at launch. Hell, even after the long-awaited Persona 5 Royal finally made its way to the Nintendo Switch after years of fans asking for it, the Steelbook was already on sale for half off less than a month later, and the same thing happened with Sonic Frontiers, a game that wasn't even a port, mind you. Granted, these 50% off sales were limited to Black Friday weekend deals, but even so, it still sucked to be one of those dopes who bought these games at launch. Personally, I knew this was gonna happen, seeing as how Sega's just as guilty of the heavy price cut within six months gimmick as anybody else, but I mean, come on, we didn't even get a month? The only reason I even bought Persona 5 Royal on the Switch in the first place after having already beaten it twice before is because, I mean, I am kind of the guy who made like 87 videos about why the game should go multiplat and that it would, so it kind of felt like I was required to by law. But had I not been that bloke, then I would have known better and just waited until like 6 or 12 months passed when the game was marked down to 20 bucks, because, I mean, we all know it's gonna happen. Don't get me wrong, I definitely wanted to buy Persona 5 Royal on the Switch one more time just to have a portable version of one of my all-time favorite games for whenever I do decide to play it again, but you want to know what I didn't buy? Persona's 3 and or 4, because first of all, they're both on Game Pass, which I have, but secondly, they didn't even make physicals for these, and I'm not convinced that Sega's not going to pump these out into a single disc and cartridge after everybody buys the digital sub. If you don't believe me, then just take a look at what they did with Sonic Mania. Oh, but Sega didn't know Sonic Mania was going to be a success, then why did they make a physical for the digital download? Uh, please make Persona 3 and 4 on, onto a physical cartridge or disc. I'll, I'll buy whatever version, just... I like these games. So Sega Atlas does put these on physicals, though, then I'm just going to play these games on Game Pass or keep my physical edition of Persona 4 Golden on the Vita and FES on the PS2. Outside of Sega and Ubisoft, though, the third biggest culprit that comes to mind, at least for me anyway, when it comes to games going from 60 to 20 in a year is Capcom. Remember everybody got so butthurt over Resident Evil 3 being a $60 game that it only takes about 6 hours for your average first playthrough, but what most of these naysayers forgot was that the game was just gonna end up at $20 a year later. I totally get the appeal of buying a new game at launch, they say you shouldn't care what others think about you, but the reality is that we all love to be a part of the good old water cooler talk to banter about whatever's relevant at any given time. And the fact is, that waiting a year to buy games for a third of the original price definitely doesn't come with that part of the experience. So what do you do? Well remember this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor, but what I do for new games that I really want to play as soon as possible is pre-order them, not because I'm excited, but because more often than not they come with a steelbook or at least something that I could sell online to somebody who refused to think slightly ahead. You know what, screw it, I am a financial advisor, and if you do exactly what I say, then I guarantee you that you'll be a billionaire within minutes. If not, you have full permission to sue me. Selling my pre-order bonuses usually gives me about two-thirds of my money back, uh, at least give or take after eBay fees and taxes and all that. But regardless of whether or not I get a game with a pre-order discount before the price cut, I try to finish them as soon as possible. And even if I love the game, I try to sell it immediately for around $40 to $45, which, after fees, means I actually make money most of the time to play a game, or if there isn't any kind of a pre-order bonus, I'd at least make most of my money back. And I'm sure there's a lot of collectors who probably want to hit me in the groin with a football, because, I mean, after all, isn't the whole point of physical to collect things? Well, yeah, that is one aspect of it, but another perk is to have the ability to sell your games when you're done with them and make some of your money back, and essentially pay less for video games as a whole. <laughs> now, doesn't this screw over the developers who worked really hard to make a game that you love? Oh, absolutely, but you know what? I'd rather screw them first before they do the exact same thing to me with a $40 price cut less than a year after I spent 60 or God forbid 70 And to be honest, this is another reason why I don't really see the big deal about games being $70 at retail now. Like, oh my god, we're gonna pay 10 more dollars? No, you don't. You just have to wait another year tops and it'll probably be $20 regardless. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not some kind of a bootlicker who's happy that games cost 10 more dollars. I'm just saying that if you use my method, then it doesn't really make a difference. But even though I'm not as bothered by the $70 price tag as most others seem to be, it certainly does give me more of an incentive to either wait for a discount or sell the game as soon as possible. 
Don't get me wrong, though. While I still may sell most of my new games, I still do have a respectable collection, even for newer consoles. I mean, after all, the Resident Evil 2 remake, for example, is one of my all-time favorite video games ever made, but even though I sold it as soon as possible, I did end up buying it back later once it was discounted into oblivion. I don't remember making a profit off of that game on eBay with any kind of a pre-order bonus or anything like that, but I do know that I still saved money by selling it and buying it again later on when I was actually ready to play it again. Of course, I wouldn't have bothered doing this in the first place if publishers on my poop list didn't earn this reputation, but as long as they keep devaluing their own games, I'm gonna keep selling them immediately or waiting for them to go on sale. I know there's tons of people out there who either can't afford full retail price for a bunch of games or just don't want to pay $60. Hell, sometimes people find $60 to be too big of a risk for certain games, so if every publisher just stopped discounting their games at all, then it would definitely lead to way fewer people actually playing them. But like, I'm not saying that games should never get price cuts, I'm just saying that if it's gonna be a year less guaranteed every time without fail, then of course people are gonna skip a game like a Mario Rabbids title. Again, I really liked the first game, and I genuinely do want to play the second one at some point, but it's not something that I need to fit into my life right now for full retail price, when I know damn well it's going to be on sale before I even finish this sentence. I and mean, the first game did well because people were curious, and the Switch didn't have nearly as many games back then, but the second time around... Meh, I think the sales prove that there's way more people out there with this mentality than just me. And no, publishers aren't discounting games because the used games market's forcing them to. Look, just look at Nintendo. A lot of people love to give Nintendo carp for almost never discounting their games, but I honestly think it's great that they don't. I mean, being this deep into the Switch's life cycle, it is kind of silly to think that the Wii U port of Mario Kart 8 still being sold for 60 cold hard American dollars, but it does make me feel a whole hell of a lot better about buying the damn thing when it first came out. Or second came out, I guess. Even the single-player Nintendo games that I never sold still kept their value over the years, and the reason for that's because Nintendo never lowered their worth to begin with. Like, check this out. I bought Paper Mario and the Origami King when it first came out, and since I'm an ADD-riddled full-grown man, I still haven't gotten around to finishing it just yet, even though I really do think it's pretty good. But you know what? I don't feel like I'm in any kind of a rush to finish it and sell it immediately since this old game isn't like $10 now. Granted, it's $37 brand new on eBay from an independent seller, but the game really wasn't all that popular to begin with. However, Fire Emblem Three Houses, on the other hand, still being sold regularly for 50 plus. It's sometimes a little cheaper if you can snipe a deal, but all in all, I don't feel like a fool for buying this game right when it came out like I do whenever I buy so many other games. I'm not even saying that I'd feel ripped off if games like Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild were made into $20 Nintendo Selects, though. Uh, hell, I wouldn't even feel ripped off if that happened to slightly newer games like Three Houses or Origami King. I'm just saying that I appreciate the fact that I know I'll never have to worry about being ripped off when I buy a Nintendo published game, even like six months or a year or two after it came out. Ideally, there should be a middle ground. It makes sense for games to get price cuts so that more people could play them, but on the other hand, if publishers keep doing significant price cuts for games that are less than a year old every single time without fail, then of course more and more people are gonna catch on and hold out on the titles that don't really have a chance at being all-time greats. You know, games like Sparks of Hope. Well, that's all for today, but if you got a kick out of my incoherent rambling and disturbing imagery, though, then you should check out this video I made about the pros and cons of gaming before the internet, but if you'll excuse me, I gotta go watch Jurassic Park on VHS. Just kidding, I'm watching Ass Park. Later.